open and record. Um, so we have a couple of folks on the line here, um, Fred Snyder and Carrie DiCiario. DiCiario? Um, Fred, could you maybe let us know uh, who you are and where you're calling from and, and what brings you to tonight's call? Uh, I'm here with my daughters. Hello. 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 Turn the video on. Turn the video on. And uh, they are high school juniors this year. Okay. <laughs> and uh, we are interested in the uh, the program. It sounds like a good uh, introduction to a lot of different uh, topics. Yeah, great. Um, and where are you all calling from? Uh, we are in Chicago. Okay, wonderful. And welcome, welcome. Carrie. We were emailing today. Um, and uh, where are you calling from? Hi there. Yes, we did email earlier today. I'm calling from Lexington, Kentucky, and my son Aiden will be a rising senior as well for the coming year. So I tracked down the program online and thought it sounded like a wonderful way for him to spend some time seeing that interdisciplinary nature um, while he's trying to decide whether to do STEM or liberal arts colleges when he starts his search. Awesome. We're <laughs> to come and we actually have both. Uh, so uh, we're very <laughs> strong in our STEM fields and um, but also a broad liberal arts college. Um, thank you. Um, I my I love the, uh, your hearing you talk. My my mother's family comes from uh, sort of Sonora Elizabethtown uh, region of Kentucky, and so uh, it's very near and dear. Uh, okay, um, I think that we'll go ahead and start, um, and then those who uh, who maybe are going to join us late, I'll make sure to send them the recording. So, um, all right. Um, turn my. I'm going to start with a. Uh, a brief uh, set of slides just to introduce the program. So I'm sharing my screen now. <clears throat> Slideshow. So um, I think you all know that this is the Beloit Summer Academy. Uh, it will be running June 16th through uh, June 29th. Um, so the second half of June really aimed at high school students who will maybe have one week off after the end of the year and uh, jump right into this ex uh, intense experience, but then still have enough time for a good amount of summer vacation. Um, the What we're going for here, uh, the why, is that we want students to have a first taste of college um, as you're exploring where to go and what college is about, what you want out of college. We want this to be an opportunity for you to have that first taste we do offer one US semester hour of credit. Um, so that distinguishes us a bit. That's transferable to wherever you go. But we would love for you to transfer it to uh, your Beloit College uh, record and come and join us for your undergraduate degree. Um, we, uh, as, as somebody mentioned, we make sure that we, you are sampling a, a variety of disciplines and subject areas, um, as well as experimenting or exploring what, what it might mean to major in different things as a college student. We emphasize project-based learning. So you're really focusing on a project and, and trying to apply all the things that you're gathering from the different workshops into some sort of a final project that you would then present. Uh, because you would be meeting with so many different professors, uh, you'll connect with a lot of different professors and um, as well as current undergraduates. So uh, Tanzil is uh, one of our um, uh, undergraduate students who was a mentor, as he mentioned. Um, there'll be, uh, we expect four mentors as part of the program, but also a, a lot of other students on campus who you can meet. Um, and then finally, but not, not last but not least, uh, having a lot of fun and making, making friends. Um, to give you just a little bit of a thumbnail of what it looks like on the academic side, We'll have two sections of this course. It's called Would I Lie to You? Fakes, Forgeries, and Fantasies. Um, it's a, a course about authenticity. What's real? What's fake? How do we know what it is? Uh, what's real? How do we verify? How do we authenticate? Um, so all the different uh, disciplines and, and, and you know academic approaches to, to learning 
have different sets of tools. And what's great about interdisciplinary learning is that you're able to borrow and combine these various tools of figuring out what's real. So a chemist may use chemical analysis to decide what, what's real and what's not real. Um, a historian may uh, be evaluating primary sources and authenticating um, perhaps documents that they find in an archive. So that's a set of skills and tools that they use to figure out what's true and what's not true. Um, so it goes on and on and every discipline has their different approach. So we have two professors, one is in the department of music um, and his special, one of his specialities is about authenticity in music. Uh, and then Michael Dango, who is in English and media studies, um, he's teaching critical internet studies and he's leading this year's um, uh, human rights focus on disinformation or misinformation and media literacy in the digital age. So um, they will be your, your lead instructors. They'll be your common thread uh, helping to contain the different workshops, but you will have guest lectures from uh, eight or, or nine different professors um, from anthropology to museum studies, theater, biology, chemistry, creative writing, economics, cognitive science, Japanese. So uh, they will all conduct workshops around the same theme of how do we know what's real and not. Um, economics, I'll add, uh, we had a wonderful session on NFTs, non-fungible tokens and cryptocurrency. So how do you know what uh, you know currency is real? It's kind of a, just an idea. Um, and that's a really interesting concept when you when you apply it uh, to our broader economy. So we have excursions around the topic. So they're fun things to do. They're not in the classroom, but they still have students thinking about the topic. Um, and of course, downtime, fun and relaxation, game time, recreation. And then a final project symposium for uh, the final day when um, parents come to pick up their um, their students. Uh, we hold a symposium where they can present that final project. Parents can see what they did. All the professors are invited, um, staff. So it's a really, it's a great celebration of the, the program. So again, it's two weeks, June 16th to 29th, um, six to one ratio, uh, at least, of students to undergraduate mentors. So there'll be a lot of individualized attention and support. Some examples of the excursions are uh, our wonderful Rockford Japanese Garden, the Anderson Japanese Gardens in Rockford. Um, great example of um, something that's uh, very, very authentic, quote unquote, uh, but it's in the middle of Rockford, Illinois. So is it real, is it not? Um, we're going to go to a botanical research site and as well as nearby cities. Uh, we might go to a living history museum. Again, this idea of how do we represent things and. How do we how do we know what's sort of real or what's sort of invented or exaggerated? So other fun activities, we'd spend time in the recreational facilities and in the city of Beloit. And then you'd be working with project teams. Um, oftentimes in the afternoon, there'll be a, a, couple, a two hour slot uh, where teams get together and the, the professor will sort of keep the teams moving along their, their project goals. Um, We'll also incorporate workshops on mental health and adjusting to college. So we won't be doing mental health counseling, but we'll be um, talking about some of the uh, challenges and anxieties that students have about, about transitioning to college and um, what are some of the supports and ways that different colleges um, take to, uh, to supporting that transition. Um, costs, I'm sure, are, are of interest. So as you can see on the website, it's $2,000 for tuition, room, board, and all activities for the full two weeks. Um, you secure, secure your spot with a $300 deposit, and then the remainder, the $1,700 uh, remainder is billed um, at the end or after the program. Uh, the, the way our billing cycle works, usually they, they aren't able to issue a bill until the end of June or beginning of July. There are payment plans available, so things can be um, sort of uh, spread out over a few months. And then we have a limited number of scholarships, which would be full scholarships, uh, but they do not cover the cost of transportation. And students can apply for the scholarship um, after being admitted. And that's just based on need, and the admissions office will have a, a, a an application that tries to assess that need um, as best we can. Here's some shots of what the campus looks like in the summertime. Um, this is very early summer, late spring, but um, we, we are on a campus uh, founded in 1846 before Wisconsin was a state. Um, so it's a very historic, beautiful campus. 
Um, we're right on the Rock River. Uh, so, uh, you know, the, the river goes all the way from uh, Janesville down through uh, Rockford and Dixon, all the way to the Mississippi River. Um, and so we have beautiful sites, beautiful uh, buildings, and a lot of open space where students can hang out. Um, we have a boathouse that's right on the river. So um, there are canoes and um, kayaks um, that we, we might organize um, outings on, but making use of that river space. Um, just a quick snapshot of some of the different workshops that students did and some of the activities. So they did a workshop on um, uh, analyzing authentic materials in our uh, Logan Anthropology Museum. So looking at, at real uh, historical archives, um, this uh, student on the left is uh, looking at a pottery, a piece of pottery that had been um, glued back together um, from pottery shards and is analyzing traces of what part of the pot is real and or authentic and what's not. Basically doing that sort of investigation with different tools like a, a black light and things like that. Um, they, they, they did uh, analysis of different objects that have been, that are comparing objects that are sort of original and quote unquote authentic to objects that are um, new and, and designed based on a, an authentic um, sort of piece of an artifact and discussed issues around um, a cultural appropriation and what that means. Um, the, the group did a podcast, basically reflecting on their experiences. And then there was some, so an art contest that Tanzel can tell you about. Um, this is just a shot of Professor Borowski uh, brainstorming with them about the ideas of authenticity. And get, he got all of their ideas out and then used that to help them shape their projects, which they presented at the end. Um, the group went to, this is the uh, the Anderson Japanese Gardens. So again, as I said, kind of, we're having fun. It's a beautiful, gorgeous um, location, but we're also talking about and thinking about um, the idea of borrowing things, appropriating things. This doesn't belong to a Japanese family, but it's got all this Japanese iconography and, and feel. So what does it mean to sort of have this thing, this space, in uh, in Northern Illinois, um, and uh, yeah, this this idea of what's real and what's not real is kind of permeated and threaded throughout. So some examples of uh, parent feedback. Uh, some of this is on the website, but um, there's really good feedback that we got. This one at the bottom says, "My son had an amazing experience at Beloit Summer Academy. He made great new friends and got a fascinating window uh, into a wide variety of disciplines." The small, highly interactive, and deeply personal connections he made with his classmates and professors is great insight into what the Beloit experience would be like overall. We're thrilled to have been a part of this inaugural cohort. Um, students were very happy. They uh, rated 100% satisfaction on all these things, the workshops, the social activities, free time, um, and um, you know, feeling like it was a good experience of college life. Um, they were more likely, oops, this, I just noticed a, a spelling error, but um, the participants had a 15% um, uh, uh, after program increase of interest in applying to Beloit as an undergrad. Um, so they, they were more interested in Beloit after they left and then all felt that the academic load was on target. So we, we, it's really just one credit, um, which means over two weeks is not a very heavy academic load. Let me pause here and I see that somebody put something in the chat. Um, oh, okay. I see that uh, Ryan was just texting me about his um, technical difficulties. That's okay, Ryan, I'll, I'll get to you in just a minute. So is that the end of my, did I just accidentally get to the end? Oh, okay. So um, just a snapshot here of the, the final presentations that students were doing in the beautiful Moore Lounge. And then um, that's the end of my presentation. So why don't I turn it over to um, Michelle to, to share some appreciations of their social experience as well as to Tanzil when he's ready. Thank you. Um so so what I I'm I'm a former high school teacher myself and and since working at Beloit and being a part of this summer program, I've really come to appreciate that the transition that happens between high school and college and how the 
how the experience of going to something that is somewhat similar to a summer camp, but very much a, uh, this is what college is really like experience um, has, has been wonderful for me to, to be a part of. So the, the daily structure of our academy is about three hours of class every morning, and then a lunch break, a debrief, some go swimming, take a break, uh, get some chill time, and then project work and uh, evening socializing. So from, from what I saw when we, we had our first group last year, um, there were three students who were family, who were like were cousins and siblings. And then there were, there were the other students and we were really wondering how the social dynamic would come together because the first night we all had dinners together, there were people who knew each other and then people who were kind of sitting off to the side. And then by the end of the two weeks, everybody in this group was just so tight, so cohesive, joking, laughing. Everybody wants to pile on the same couch together. It was just a really friendly, really kind of encouraging um, group. And I think that cohesion really comes from the nature of the activities that we have and the way that the interdisciplinarity of the courses gives everyone a chance to share authentically and to share questions and answers and speculation and research in ways that are stretching their brains. So everyone is having this, oh, yay, I get to be away from my family for two weeks. I get to live in a college dorm. This is what the cafeteria is like. This is what the sports center is like. This is what the classes are like. And also just really dig into something that that takes their brains into places that they've not been. Um, so we noticed that the social interactions from having so much time together and also just being curious in a new way with people that they didn't know was a really positive one. So Tenzil, do you want to talk about some of the activities that you guys do when everybody's not in class? Yep. So for me and like I was with, we had like two mentors that last time, Vika and me, and we had like all of the things planned, what they are going to do every time after the class and after the debrief sessions. So because we didn't want them to be like leave alone and go to their room and do nothing and then, you know, watch laptop or something like do some watch youtube or something we didn't want them to do that we, we were like ah, let's do something let's have some fun let's uh, do some kind of activity so we usually had like different activity plans like sometime we used to we went out to watch movies in the pearson like there was like a big uh, projector and everything was there and everybody was there and like watching movies and apart from the movies we went for the excursion basically and we were like we'd, we hide out like some clues everywhere around the campus and um, they were like going around the campus and finding what all the clues were and how the one clue is related to another and how they have to from, go there and there and there and they have to wander around the whole campus and find out the final clue and the team were divided into like two parts and it was it was quite fun and um, overall uh, for me uh, if I say like as in um, if I was a student because I never went to summer camp or summer academy kind of stuff I'm like I I'm originally from India and I directly came to school and for me if I if I had to be that student in that place and do all that kind of stuff what they did believe me I would have like enjoyed it a lot because I, I had seen them like laughing and doing and like laughing at some silly jokes which were not even like I like for me and Vika we were like why they are laughing like there were like some insider jokes which they had every time uh, laughing at some ringtones funny ringtones or whatever so it was like so much of inclusivity maybe and more of like you know uh, sharing their thoughts and doing whatever they want to do and we also one more thing we had like prize competition for uh, um, fashion show actually we did like a fashion show and we had like a prize competition. But the fun fact about the fashion show was the theme should be uh, related to some like social cultural topic. Like, you know, like you should show some kind of theme behind the fashion. So we gave them like all of the old clothes and all of the things like different things or old stuff, different things. And we made them like, oh, these are the stuff and you have to do something out of this and come up with some new idea or come up with some new theme and then you have to like present the theme and what your design is all about what you are wearing and why you are wearing and how it's affected to the real life problems and it was 
more about that and there were like a different people had like different theme which they were talking about so one of the team won i still remember eva and uh, tyler and i guess ryan was there i think in that team uh, i'm not sure but uh, there were like a three people in one team and they won and they got the prize actually the real trophy uh, <laughs> the passion prize and it was quite fun i like Thank for you. me i loved it Thank you. And so we also have Ryan with us. I think he's having a little problem with his camera, but Ryan, do you want to just talk a little bit about your experiences and then we'll get to some questions? Oh, uh, can you hear me? Just just checking. Yeah, okay. Um, so I was a student who went through the program. I didn't. I missed a lot of what you said earlier, Josh, so sorry if this is a repeat, but uh, I really enjoyed a lot of the, the, the balance between the classes and like the extracurricular activities that we did outside of things formed a really good... Um, I'd say schedule, and it was just a really fun experience overall. Made a lot of strong connections to the program, and yeah. Ryan, do you feel like doing the summer academy made you feel like more prepared to start your freshman year at Beloit? Oh yeah, definitely. Um, I know I was like really hesitant when I first came to summer academy, and then by the time I was like all the way through it, I was kind of sad that it was over. But when I came to Beloit here, I felt mm -hmm. very comfortable in the transition between between the two. Great. Thank you. Okay. So I think we can open up for questions. If anybody would like to chime in or ask us about the program, anything we haven't covered. If you don't mind, I would like to ask whether there's going to be a cap on the number of students this year or Yes, yeah, so we're hoping uh, we're hoping to cap it at 24. So we can have uh, two cohorts of 12 for classes. And then uh, it, we have a six to one mentor, peer mentor to student ratio. So the, the peer mentors are Beloit College students and they stay in the dorms. They do all of the afternoon activities after class is over, make sure everybody is okay. If any, if the, any medical emergencies happen after hours, which we always hope they don't, there's somebody right there who has all the phone numbers. Um, so the classes are groups of 12, and then the breakout groups, uh, usually the project groups are three, then the breakout group with the mentor would be six. Uh, so there's a lot of, there's a lot of hands-on, and it, and it, we don't want the classes bigger than 12 because they just, you just can't connect, you know. Any other questions? Yeah. Um, we were wondering how the weekend was going to be scheduled and like were there activities or just loose time? Yeah, usually we do a, like a full most of the day excursion on the Saturday and then Sundays are sleep in, have a late breakfast, have some project time and then have some unstructured time, run a, lo run a load of laundry. There's really only one weekend. You know, because we start on a Monday mm -hmm. and then there's a Saturday, Sunday in the middle. And then we wrap up. I think we wrap up on a Saturday, Josh. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So um, it, it is uh, it is scheduled time, but it's it's there's freedom within the schedule, if that makes sense. Okay. So there's, there's that um, parents are uh, probably uh, wanting to make sure they know that it's not like um, you're just, you know, free and alone in Beloit, Wisconsin on the weekend. Uh, <laughs> Everybody is doing things together and you'll always be with your mentors and it, you're not allowed to like really just go off on your own. So um, I know that that might feel uh, constraining, but um, that's the way it has to be. We can't just have students just kind of going off on their own. So you'll be, um, uh, if, you, if, if you go, it'll be in small groups with one of the mentors. Um, that because, makes perfect sense. Thank you. Yeah. Well, and also we we try to give the days structure, but like the the first week last summer, we had this really massive heat wave and there was a lot of smoke from the wildfires up north. So where we were like, okay, we're going to be go, 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 go. And then we have free time in the evening at two o'clock. Everybody was dying of exhaustion. And we were like, okay, we're going to change the work plan to after dinner. And we're going to the pool now because that will be much more refreshing than sitting, working on homework and then not going swimming when after dinner, when the pool is closed, you know? So we've got a, we've built a lot of flexibility into when the different chunks of the day can happen. So if it's really hot and nobody wants to do anything, 
okay, you have to go swimming or sit in the air conditioning. Sorry. You know? Um, and it's really, you know, like different groups have different energy. So as we, um, as we assemble our cohort for the summer, we'll be able to kind of define roles with our peer mentors as everybody gets to know each other. Like, okay, this is the group of people who would like to sit in the library air conditioning. This is the group of people who would like to go swimming. We will have enough people to kind of balance it out. So everybody is accompanied, but not necessarily hovered over, you know? Because it is college, you know, we want you to feel like you're at college, but also we can't be like, sure, go downtown, come back in five hours. Like that's, you know, there's legal stuff. We can't do that. Any other questions? I had one other question about the, I assume, dorm situation. I just wanted to check and see whether it was doubles or triples or... Um, I'm pretty sure last year everybody had a single room. Oh. Um, because we had, we had few, fewer students than we were expecting, but it would be a mix of singles and doubles. Okay. Yeah. Thank and, you. um, they will be on, uh, let's see, uh, separate uh, segregated gender floor, right? Or do we not? Yeah. But separate bathrooms based on gender. So last year we were in Aldrich will be in Chapin this year, I think. Yeah. So, but, um, they would all be, they would all, all, all sexes and genders would be on the same floor or floors, um, but with separate bathrooms is the plan. Um, yeah. And of course, with, um, with uh, private bathrooms, uh, single, you know, single use bathrooms for those who um, want them. Uh, some, some people don't want to have the group bathroom at all. So. <clears throat> Yeah, we have, we have a lot of different we have a lot of different configurations in our facilities. So as people let us know what their needs are, we're able to accommodate pretty much anything. Yeah, great. Well, we're running up to the end of our time. So last call for questions. If you have any other questions after tonight, or you would know anyone else who would like to come and talk to us about Summer Academy, please see please send along an email. And let us know what you think. Registration link is open. And, um, you know, sign up. Invite your friends. We're going to have a great time. And uh, we hope to see you this summer. Super. Thank you for your time. Yeah. Thank you so much. Good night, everyone. Thank Good you. Night. Nice to meet you all. Thanks, Tumzil. And thanks, Ryan. Thank you. Good night.